Hello YouTube and welcome to another 3D ROS tutorial. Today I'm going to cover texturing and UV mapping. So we're going to start off with a regular cube and let's just say we want a wood texture on this cube. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold right click, you're going to go down to assign favorite material, go to Lambit. This is our standard material, what we're going to use for now. There's of course other materials like Blade where you can apply a specular map so you've got some shininess to your model and loads of different other shaders and if you click assign new material you get a whole host of materials but for today we're just going to cover Lambert. So to apply material we want to go to the colour section. On the colour section we're going to change the colour by double clicking this colour here and selecting what colour we want. However, today we're we'll going to apply a wood texture. So you want to click this check it box here and go over a file. Then click this folder icon here and locate where your texture is saved. For this tutorial I'm going to use this wood texture here and click open. And now you would uh, nothing's happened, where's the wood texture at? So to display textures what you want to do is you want to come up to this icon here, this checkered pattern here. And this is the textured view. So click on it and there's your texture. So you now have a wood texture on here. And that's fine. But what if you wanted it on a different type of model? So let's delete this model for now. Click the model, hit delete. Create a new cube. So if we had more complex geometry, let's say, let's go to face mode, hold right click, go to face, click on this face, hit Control e to extrude, push this extrusion up, select this face, hold Control e extrude along here. So, and then right click, go back to object mode, and now hold right click, and now assign existing material because we're already created material and it's the second lamp bit. Lamp bit one's our default grey material that we've got here. So we've got the second lamp bit. And now you notice the material looks quite strange. And this has got to do with UV mapping. So to fix this you go up to UV, UV editor. And here you'll have this view here. And this will show you your cube. So this is like a net, so the cube is all folded out. But as you can see, we've only got faces compensated for one cube. But we have more, more faces than a regular cube. So to fix this, you need to UV map it. So you go to UV, and then you go on automatic map it. However, this doesn't always work correctly and how you want to and you get some strange results using this. Let's go object mode to see our result. So this is our result. This looks fairly good actually. But what happens if we want to put our UV map into Photoshop and start drawing on it? So to do that, we'll want to lay our UVs so we can draw directly on top of it in Photoshop. So you want to go to your UV editor again. So again, UV, UV editor. And here you can see all the faces that are on the mesh. And if you right click, go to shell, you can select the shell. So this is where faces are joined together to create one shell. So as you can see, this is a shell because it all conforms to the same UV map, whereas this is separated from that. So we'll go click on this shell, and we'll just move it over here for now. And obviously you can tell this doesn't conform to how this moves, because the grooves are not going along, but they're going vertical. And this is a problem that we could easily fix. It's just because the UV shell is portrait, so we want to turn it landscape. So hit E to rotate, 
and then I'm going to hold J to stack 45 degree increments. But mine's not set to 45, it's set 15. But just so it's stacked to here. So now it's running the same way. However, you can see that it's not lined up properly. So I want to go back to it, go to UV, UV shell, click on it, and we want to line these two up. So, what I like to do is I like to go to the edge mode, and we can see where which edges correspond to what. So we can see this edge here corresponds to here. So we're going to move our geometry up to here. And now let's see, it's roughly in place. We've got some seams here because our texture is not a repeating texture. But if we move it down, that should fix it if we go into the texture area. Yep, so now you can see that it's lined up, but it's not exactly lined up. So what we want to do is go back to right click shell. Click on this shell, zoom in using scroll wheel, hold Alt and Midi Mouse to pan. And what we want to do is click vertex snapping up here, this magnet with the dot. So click that, and this will basically snap the point of origin to the vertices, but we don't want to snap the center origin. We want to snap the side so it'll eat these edges, it'll come together. So to do this, we're going to hold D, and this will allow you to adjust the pivot point. So hold D, and left click in the middle, and drag to the point you want. It should snap in place at the, at the side. Let go of D, and let go of left click, and then hold left click and move it into place. And now you can see they've snapped together, and if we go to here, these edges perfectly line up. So these are cut form in the same way. And obviously you're going to always have seams. But as a texture artist, it's your job to hide these seams. Or as a 3D modeler. So usually you'd have your seams at the bottom where a player or the viewer isn't going to see them seams. Sometimes you'd have them on the side and you can get away with it because it's not very obvious as long as it somewhat lines up because if you think of a net all laid out you're going to have although there's some faces together you're going to have at least two ends on either side where it's not going to wrap around properly so let's fix this top face here so go to U right click UV UV shell select that so we know it's this one here and I want it to snap to this side. So go to edge, click this edge, and now let's see these two edges correspond together. Now sometimes the UVs are flipped, so you want to check. So we'll go to vertex and click on the edge, and this right one should correspond to the right on there, as it does. However, if you do not have that, and the, say the edges are on the bottom, and it's on the bottom here, then if that's the case, you want to select one of the faces, go to polygons, and you want to go to flip. And obviously you want to flip vertical if they are both edges that are connected together as on the bottom or the top. Because you want them on different sides. And also if the vertice on the right is not on the vertice on the right here, you want to flip horizontal. But in our case, this is fine. So we're going to do exactly what we did before. Hold D and move it to the side. And move it down here so it snaps in place. And as you can see, that perfectly lines up there. So I'm just going to go to Shell and click these, left click these here, hold Shift and click them. And just move them out of the way for now. So now we've got these together, we're going to go on to this face. And this is the final face, and this is where we're going to get some seams. So we need to decide where we're going to have the seam. Are we going to have the seam here or here? And I think 
we're going to choose to have the same on over here okay so in that case we want to make sure this edge conforms to the patterns so left click edge click on the edge here and as you can see these two are both facing down like the problem I said before so you want to go to shell click on this shell you want to go polygons at the top and we will go to flip and click the square to go to vertical apply and close now you can see it's flipped so this should be in the right position to go so let's make sure we go to edge now one's at the top one's at the bottom and then snap together and uh, now we need to make sure they are flipped correctly horizontal so check if the vertices line up so hold right click vertex so the right vertex here is the left vertex here which is not correct so we're going to have to invert this model again so we're going to flip horizontally so right click shell click on the shell polygons flip this time we're going to go a horizontal close now it should snap together so now we're going to hold D we're going to move the pivot point up to here and snap that in place and there no seams here obviously we have a seam here which is because this texture I've chosen is not tileable and the texture repeaters once it gets to here so to fix this we can go to shell select all these and make it smaller so the wood texture is bigger and it does not repeat like that or we can find a repeating texture also instead of having a long line sometimes you'll have to have two seams so you could make a seam here and a seam there so I'll show you how to do that so you're going to go to shell and click these two here and we're going to break the link here to move it off this way you can enlarge these two and have a better texture density so there's more detail on it but in this case we can easily fit it around so I'm just going to line them back up Control Z there we go so now these all wrap around perfectly now I'm going to line up the bottom so again I'm going to move this across obviously it's not the right way so we're going to hold hit E hold J and rotate 90 degrees now it's going the correct way so we're going to match this edge here let's see so this edge here and as you can see they're both facing down so we're going to have to flip vertically polygons flip and vertical apply so now that's moved now we'll check the vertices to see if they both line up correctly as you can see they don't because this one's on the right and it's on the left here so we're going to have to flip it horizontally now polygons flip horizontal apply hit D move it over and move this over here so so now we need to match these up And as you can see, this is large compared to that. So I'm just going to hit D and move it into the correct place here. And now we are going to have to scale this edge. But unlike geometry, we can't click this edge and snap into place because it's going to affect this other edge as well. It's going to affect the other edges, which is a problem. So we're going to have to either scale it like this so manually and get it roughly in place 
or what you could do is you could probably make sure you when you UV map you can go a UV planar and then this will project the image like that and you can select change the rotation so 90 degrees up does up there 90 degrees round here so we are going to set that to zero and that will go like that we'll set this 90 so it rotates round I want to make this back to 90 sorry and this to 90 there so that's now going that way we're going to enlarge this a bit so and what you do is you can print screen these parameters here so this is where the projections take in place and put it in a uh, say paint and paste the screenshot in and now go back to here go to UV planar and then you want to type in the same parameters you had on the other side but it's going to be slightly different so we got 276.583 we got zero and zero. We got ninety, zero and ninety. For the scale, which is important, we've got nine seven four point zero zero six. Nine seven four point zero zero six because it's square. And obviously, this is projected correctly if we were doing the square on this side, but we are projecting this axis now so we're going to have to rotate this round so what we're going to do is hit zero here and 90 here so it rotates that way and as you can see these line up perfectly and they are the both same width and height because we have defined it there if we do this all the way around and as you can see on our UV set They both match up here correctly, but that way is quite a pain, and it's not the most efficient way of doing things. So I usually like to just scale it manually. Uh, that's been the basic tutorial on UV mapping, but we have one more thing, something that can help you when you're doing it if you don't have a texture or before you texture it. So if you go to your UV map you can click this checker pattern here and you get this this tile pattern and this way you can see if it tiles correctly so if it tiles correctly these squares will match up correctly as you can see they do here and also you can see if they're the same size so obviously this is much bigger than this bit so this shell here it's obviously much larger than this because it's got more detail. This is smaller because it's zoomed in. So really you want everything the same size. However, if you're hand painting, it doesn't usually make a difference because you can just change your scale in Photoshop. You can also, if you create a new material, say Lambert, if you go back to the colour and checker pattern when we uploaded a file, instead of going to File, you can hit Checkers. And you basically just get a checker pattern and this helps you line things up correctly again. So it line up the cubes correctly and see if it tiles properly. So yeah, this has been a 3D ROS tutorial. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, give it a like. And if you're wanting more Autodesk Maya videos and anything to do with 3D modeling, texturing, uh, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.